my name is Alex, and I live in a small town in Maine. My life here has always been measured and predictable. Work at the office, home, family. I have been married to a wonderful woman named Sarah for almost 10 years. One day, my mother-in-law, Margaret, suggested that we all take a break together at her country house. Sarah and I talked it over and decided to spend a couple of weekends there to get away from the hustle and bustle of the city and enjoy nature. Alex, I was thinking, maybe you and Mom could go early, get everything ready for my arrival, Sarah suggested at breakfast. I'll come right after work, and in the meantime, you can chat in peace. I agreed, thinking it was a good idea. Margaret and I had always gotten along, and I was happy to have the opportunity to spend time alone with her, to get to know her better. On the appointed day, Margaret and I set off. The trip was pleasant, we chatted about this and that, enjoying the scenery outside the window. I felt that this weekend would be special, although I didn't yet understand how much. When we arrived, we got to work. We needed to air out the house, go grocery shopping, and prepare everything for the barbecue. Margaret and I worked together like old friends, laughing and joking with each other. As evening approached and almost all the chores were done, I noticed that the weather was starting to deteriorate. The wind picked up and the sky was overcast. I began to worry that Sarah might be delayed on the way. Don't worry, Alex, Margaret reassured me, noticing my anxiety. Sarah is an experienced driver. She can handle it. In the meantime, let's set the table and wait for her. That's what we did, but time passed and Sarah still wasn't there. I started calling her, but her phone was out of range. Meanwhile, the storm outside was gaining strength. The wind was howling and the rain was lashing against the windows. Suddenly, my phone rang in my pocket. It was Sarah. Her voice sounded upset and anxious. Alex, I don't think I can make it today. All the roads are closed because of the storm. I'll have to stay home and tomorrow I'll try to come to you first thing in the morning. I felt my heart clench with worry. The thought of having to spend the night alone with Margaret in this big, empty house and in such weather made me nervous. Okay, honey, don't worry. Margaret and I will manage. The main thing is to be careful and keep us posted, I said, trying to sound calm. Hanging up, I looked at Margaret. In her eyes, I saw the same anxiety and uncertainty that I was feeling myself. We both understood that this night would be a test for us but we had no idea how serious it would be. The storm outside was getting stronger, the wind was howling louder, and it seemed that the house was about to be torn from its foundation. Margaret and I sat in the living room, lit only by the light of the fireplace and a few candles. We need to keep ourselves busy or I'll go crazy with worry, Margaret said, shivering. Maybe we should have some wine and talk. It's impossible to sleep in this weather anyway. I agreed and we opened a bottle of red wine, saved for special occasions. Pouring the wine into glasses, we settled on the couch closer to the fireplace. At first, our conversation was about little things, work, the weather, plans for the future. But gradually, as the wine warmed us from the inside and the atmosphere became more intimate, we began to talk about more personal matters. You know, Alex, I wasn't always like I am now. Margaret suddenly said, looking at the fire. In my youth, I made a lot of mistakes that I now regret. I looked at her in surprise. In all the years we had known each other, I had never heard anything like this from her. We all have our secrets and regrets, I said softly, covering her hand with mine. The main thing is that now you are a wonderful woman, a loving mother and mother-in-law. Margaret smiled, but I noticed sadness in her eyes. She took a big sip of wine and continued. When I was the same age as Sarah is now, I was in love with a man. He was older than me, married, but that didn't stop either him or me. We met in secret, deceiving everyone around us. I listened, holding my breath. I never would have thought that Margaret had such a story. But one day his wife found out about us. There was a terrible scandal. I thought my life was over. I had to leave town, start all over again. Since then I've sworn off having relationships with married men. Margaret fell silent, staring into the distance. I squeezed her hand, trying to express my support. Thank you for sharing with me, Margaret. I appreciate your trust. And believe me, this doesn't make you a bad person. We all make mistakes. She looked at me with gratitude and tenderness. At that moment, something new flashed between us. Some special understanding and closeness. We continued to talk, 
gradually moving closer to each other. The wine and the warmth of the fireplace were relaxing, erasing boundaries. At some point, I caught myself admiring Margaret, her soft features, graceful hands, the sparkle in her eyes. You know, Alex, I've always admired you, she suddenly said, looking me straight in the eye. You are a real man, reliable, caring. Sarah is very lucky to have you. Her words and gaze sent shivers down my spine. I suddenly realized that I felt not only sympathy for her, but also attraction. And judging by the way she looked at me, it was mutual. I don't know which of us reached for the other first. It seemed to happen simultaneously, as if by some silent agreement, our lips met in a kiss, at first tender and uncertain, but gradually becoming more passionate and insistent. For a moment I forgot about everything, about Sarah, about our marriage, about the fact that Margaret was my wife's mother. There were only the two of us, and this inexplicable, all-consuming desire. We kissed for a long time and greedily, exploring each other with our hands, moaning with pleasure. At some point, Margaret ended up on my lap, and our bodies began to move in unison. The climax came suddenly, like a flash of lightning. We cried out simultaneously and fell silent, breathing heavily and clinging to each other. And then reality came crashing down on us like ice water. We recoiled from each other as if burnt and stared at each other with horror and disbelief. My God, Alex, what have we done? Margaret whispered, covering her face with her hands. How could we do this to Sarah? I was silent, unable to find the words. Inside me, everything was screaming with shame, guilt, and disgust with myself. How could I betray my wife by sleeping with her mother? What would happen to our family? To our relationship now. Margaret, listen, I finally managed to say, trying to speak calmly. What happened? It was a mistake, a momentary weakness. We shouldn't have given in to this madness. She raised her tearful eyes to me and nodded. You're right, Alex. This must not happen again. We have to forget about it for Sarah's sake, for the sake of our family. We sat side by side, not touching each other, trying to comprehend what had happened and find a way out. Outside the window, the storm was gradually subsiding, as if echoing our emotions. Let's agree, I said, looking Margaret in the eye. What happened tonight will stay between us. We will never tell anyone about this, especially Sarah. We will behave as usual as if nothing has changed. Margaret nodded in agreement, wiping away her tears. Yes, Alex, this will be our secret, our burden. We must carry it in silence to preserve our family. We sealed our agreement with a long, sad look, and then we went to our separate rooms, trying to fall asleep and forget what had happened, at least until morning. But I knew that this night would forever remain in my memory, as a reminder of my weakness, my guilt, and the fragile line that is so easy to cross when yielding to momentary temptation. The next morning was awkward and tense. Margaret and I tried to act naturally, but every look, every word was imbued with hidden meaning and secret knowledge. We pretended to be engrossed in breakfast and household chores, but in reality, we were just afraid to look each other in the eye, afraid to see the reflection of our own guilt and shame. I thought about Sarah, about how she would feel when she returned. Would Margaret and I be able to behave in a way that she wouldn't suspect anything? Would we be able to live on, carrying this burden within us? The weather outside improved, the storm had passed, leaving only wet ground and broken branches. I hoped that our souls would also eventually be cleansed and healed like wounds on tree trunks. Around noon, Sarah called and said she was leaving the city. Her voice sounded cheerful and carefree, and I felt even more ashamed of what I had done. I can't wait to see you, my dears, she chirped on the phone. I hope you didn't miss me too much. I assured her that we had a great time, trying to make my voice sound sincere. Margaret stood beside me, nervously fiddling with the hem of her dress and biting her lips. Hanging up, I turned to her. Sarah will be here in a couple of hours. We need to prepare to get ourselves together. Margaret nodded, avoiding my gaze. Alex, are you sure we can do this, that we can live as before, as if nothing happened? I sighed and gently took her hand. This touch was no longer sensual, as it had been at night. Rather, it was friendly and encouraging. We have to, Margaret, for Sarah's sake, for the sake of our family. It won't be easy, but we'll manage.
The main thing is to stick to our story and not let emotions get the best of us. She squeezed my hand in response and smiled weakly. You're right, Alex. We're strong. We can do this. I'll keep myself in check. I promise. We went to our rooms to take a shower and change clothes. Looking at my reflection in the mirror, I hardly recognized myself. In one night, I seemed to have aged several years, and a shadow had settled in my eyes that hadn't been there before. But I knew I had to be strong, for Sarah's sake, for the sake of our marriage. I couldn't let my mistake destroy everything we had worked so hard to build. When Sarah arrived, Margaret and I greeted her with smiles and hugs. I kissed my wife, trying to put all my love and remorse into that kiss. I missed you so much, honey, I said, looking into her eyes. Never leave me for that long again. Sarah laughed and playfully slapped me on the shoulder. Oh, come on. I've already gotten used to not having your snoring for this one night. Maybe I should leave you with mom more often. Margaret and I smiled stiffly, avoiding looking at each other. If only Sarah knew what had happened in her absence. The rest of the day was spent in hustle and bustle. We prepared lunch, walked around the neighborhood, and shared news. I tried to be an attentive and caring husband, compensating for my guilt with increased tenderness. Margaret held up well, smiling and joking as if nothing had happened. Only occasionally did I notice her smile fading and a sad, haunted look appearing in her eyes. In the evening when Sarah and I went to bed, I couldn't fall asleep for a long time, listening to her steady breathing. My wife trusted me, loved me, and I had betrayed her in the most despicable way. I swore to myself that I would never make such a mistake again. No matter what happened, I would be faithful to Sarah and our family. Even if it meant burying the memory of that night in the farthest corners of my soul. We spent the next few days at the country house, enjoying the peace and each other's company. Margaret and I tried to act naturally, but the tension between us didn't go away. We avoided being alone, afraid that the old feelings would flare up again. Only by stealth did we exchange meaningful glances, full of longing and regret. Sarah didn't seem to notice anything. She was happy and relaxed, enjoying the opportunity to be with her family away from the hustle and bustle of the city. I, on the other hand, felt as if I was living a double life. During the day, I was a loving husband and caring son-in-law, and at night I was tormented by nightmares and guilt. I remembered that fateful night, our passionate kisses and caresses with Margaret, and each time I would wake up in a cold sweat, hating myself for this weakness. One evening when Sarah was already asleep, I went out on the porch to get some fresh air. To my surprise, Margaret was already standing there, thoughtfully gazing at the stars. Can't sleep? I asked quietly, standing next to her. She shuddered and turned to me. In the moonlight, her face seemed especially pale and sad. Yes, too many thoughts. Alex, do you, do you regret what happened? I sighed heavily, gathering my courage. I knew that this conversation had been brewing for a long time, but I was still not ready. Yes, Margaret, I regret it. Not the fact itself, but that we hurt Sarah, even if she doesn't know about it. We destroyed something very precious and fragile. Margaret nodded, and I noticed tears in her eyes. I regret it too, Alex, but at the same time, at the same time I can't forget those feelings, that unity that was between us, as if we were made for each other. Her words cut me to the heart, because deep down, I felt the same way, as if Margaret and I were two halves of one whole at that moment. But I couldn't allow myself to give in to that feeling. I couldn't betray Sarah and our marriage. Margaret, listen, I said, gently taking her hands. What happened between us? It was the magic of the moment, a flash of passion. But it can't and shouldn't destroy what we already have, our families, our lives. Margaret sobbed, but nodded. You're right, Alex. We must bury our feelings, keep them a secret, for Sarah's sake, for the sake of all of us. We hugged, not as lovers, but as friends who had been through something important and painful together. And then we went to our separate rooms, carrying the bitterness of an unfulfilled dream in our hearts. Coming home was both a relief and a challenge. On the one hand, I no longer had to control my emotions and words every minute, afraid of giving away my secret with Margaret. On the other hand, the familiar way of life now seemed false and unnatural. It was as if I was looking at everything from the outside, not recognizing myself or my life. 
Sarah, immersed in work and household chores, didn't notice my condition. She chatted about her plans, about her friend's news, and I nodded and smiled, trying to maintain the appearance of normality. Only at night, lying sleeplessly next to my peacefully snoring wife, did I give free rein to my thoughts and feelings. I remembered Margaret, her touches, her eyes burning with desire, and I hated myself for not being able to get those memories out of my head. We continued to see Margaret at family gatherings and holidays. We were polite and friendly to each other, but kept our distance. Sometimes I would catch her sad, longing gaze on me, and my heart would clench with pain. I knew that she was suffering too, also fighting with herself every day. But we both understood that our duty was to keep the secret, not to destroy our families. No matter what we felt for each other, we couldn't let that feeling prevail. Months passed, turning into years. My life fell into a familiar routine, but inside me, it was as if an emptiness had formed that couldn't be filled. I tried to be a good husband, a loving father, but every time I looked at Sarah, I felt a pang of guilt. She didn't deserve such a betrayal, even if it was unconscious. My only consolation was the rare meetings with Margaret. We never stayed alone, but even simple communication gave me the strength to go on. We talked about books, about travels, about our dreams, and in those moments, I felt that there was still that special connection between us, even if we couldn't give it free reign. One day, many years later, when Sarah and I had already become grandparents, I received a letter from Margaret. It contained only a few lines, but they turned my world upside down. Dear Alex, she wrote, I am leaving, not in a physical sense, but in a spiritual one. I'm tired of fighting with myself, tired of living in constant tension and fear of exposure. I'm going on a journey to find myself and find peace. But I want you to know, I will never forget you and the night we had. You will forever remain in my heart. Forgive me if you can, and be happy. Sincerely yours, Margaret. I sat for a long time, rereading these lines and feeling tears welling up in my eyes. Margaret had found the strength to do what I had never dared to do, to break free from the captivity of our shared secret. I realized that I was tired too, tired of pretending, tired of living with constant guilt. It was time to let go of the past and start living in the present. That same evening, I told Sarah everything. About that night, about my feelings for Margaret, about the years spent in silent torment. She listened to me without interrupting, and in her eyes I saw pain and disappointment but also understanding and sympathy. Alex, she said when I finished, I won't lie, it hurts to hear this, but I see how you've suffered all this time, and I'm grateful to you for your honesty. We need time to get through this, to forgive and learn to trust each other again, but I love you, and together we will cope. I hugged her, feeling as if a huge weight had been lifted from my shoulders. For the first time in many years, I felt free and whole. I knew that a difficult path lay ahead of us, but I also knew that by my side was a wise and loving woman ready to walk this path together. And Margaret, she forever remained in my heart as a symbol of passion, pain, and forgiveness, as a reminder that in life nothing is unambiguous and that everyone deserves a second chance. I believe that wherever she is now, she has finally found peace and harmony, just as I have, next to the woman I love and to whom I owe everything. This is my story, a story about love, mistakes, and redemption, about how one night can change your whole life, and about how it's never too late to make the right choice. Did you like this story? Let us know in the comments what you liked. Subscribe to our storytelling podcast. Also, don't forget to like and ring the bell so you don't miss more interesting stories. See you soon.